Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Double A Entertainment. Today, I will be discussing a bit of an obscure topic, and that is the public domain. When a film lands in the public domain, that means it is no longer owned by any organization, government, or individual because its copyright has run out. Therefore, it is often redistributed, archived, or in worst case scenarios, even edited in very poor conditions which is why oftentimes you can find packages of 50 to 100 movies for 5 to $10, or you can even watch many black and white movies on YouTube absolutely for free. So for today, here are my top 10 favorite horror films that landed in the public domain. At number 10, Night of the Living Dead. With a whopping 97% on Rotten Tomatoes and a Criterion Collection DVD release, George A. Romero's feature film debut is one of those magical little films that could. Released in 1968, when up to that point, zombies were only seen as the aftermath of voodoo spells, the young George Romero completely turned the concept on its head by giving the world the modern day zombie, previously buried, maggot infested, decomposing corpses who consumed the flesh of the living. After a visit to the cemetery results in, ironically, the death of a brother at the hands of a ghoul, Barbara seeks shelter at an abandoned home along with a young African American man named Ben. As the news reaches the masses and the population of the living dead booms, four more people join Ben and Barbara in hopes of surviving and even outsmarting their opponents. However, tensions rise when the six begin to butt heads. On surface level, Night of the Living Dead was a blood and guts driving B movie, but by the end, its racial and socio-political messages become more prevalent, especially due to its utter devastating ending. At number 9, A Bucket of Blood. Starring B-movie legend Dick Miller and directed by the drive-in movie maestro Roger Corman, A Bucket of Blood was released in 1959 and was actually the predecessor to The Little Shop of Horrors. Walter is a down-on-his-luck, socially awkward busboy at a jazz club frequented by snobbish beatniks. Walter, while trying to earn an honest living, is also an aspiring artist with no actual artistic talent until one day, after accidentally murdering his neighbor's cat and covers it up with clay, he begins to gain respect and recognition amongst the beatnik counterculture. Struggling to search for inspiration for his next piece, the awkward Walter ends up creating more ghastly, macabre, and outright terrifying pieces including sculptures of a strangled woman, a decapitated human head, and even men with a skull split open. A Bucket of Blood is a dark and satirical take on the beatnik counterculture and the overall art world. At number 8, Dementia. Remember the original 1958 The Blob with Steve McQueen? The movie they were watching during the movie theater scene? This is that movie. Dementia, aka Daughter of Horror, is a 1955 horror film with heavy film noir vibes. Released in 1955 and with no dialogue, only voiceovers, we follow a mentally distraught woman as she prowls the streets of Skid Row at night. During this nightmarish trek, we come to witness the vulnerability of the young woman as well as the dangers that lurk within these streets. Her abusive upbringing also comes to light with eerie and upsetting flashbacks. Dementia is a very surreal and avant-garde film that runs just under an hour but is a great watch even for the cinematography alone. Number 7, Carnival of Souls. Much like Night of the Living Dead, Carnival of Souls is another film that managed to land a favoring 86% on Rotten Tomatoes and a Criterion Collection DVD release despite being in the public domain. After a drag race on a crookedy bridge drowns a car of four women, leaving only one survivor, Mary gets back on her feet after her near-death experience and earns a paycheck as a church organist. During a late night drive, an abandoned carnival catches Mary's eye and a ghostly hitchhiker begins to stalk her. This film is a mind-bending horror thriller that follows the descent of the tragic Mary as she tries to go about her life but fails at work and romance. The one thing though that seems to keep calling her attention is none other than the spooky abandoned carnival. Why does Mary keep drifting in and out of reality and what do these ghosts want of her? At number 6, House on Haunted Hill. The charismatic Vincent Price stars in this William Castle shocker as Frederick Lauren, who, on behalf of his wife, invites five guests to spend the night at a house on Haunted Hill. Those who manage to make it through the night will be rewarded $10,000. The catch is that the house, as you can already tell, is haunted. Yeah, the spend the night in a haunted house joke was getting old by the time William Castle directed this film in 1959, but this film is still freaking terrifying. This was actually one of two of the first films that genuinely terrified me. In this haunted house, we are treated to severed heads, hanging bodies, floating ghosts, 
flying skeletons, a bat of acid, and a sinister grinning old hag that gave me nightmares for several months after I first breaked through this film. So join the party on Haunted Hill, where the ghosts so far have only murdered 7 people, so why don't you come and make it 8? At number 5, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Cited as the first feature length horror film, this German expressionist classic from director Robert Wine is often studied in film schools for many great reasons, not to mention it was also the first film to have a twist ending. The film opens up with a ghost-like figure walking past two gentlemen on a bench and Francis, the younger of the two, begins to recount the atrocities he and his girlfriend Jane, the ghost-like figure, endured. In this flashback, a mysterious and creepy top hat wearing doctor named Caligari takes advantage of the upcoming carnival to display a somnambulist named Cesar, played by Conrad Veidt, who would also go on to play Gwen Plain and his father in The Man Who Laughs. Everybody is creeped out by the grim looking duo and rightfully so, as it turns out, Dr. Caligari is using Cesar to commit atrocious and ghastly murders all over the small town. And if you aren't scared enough, this film is based loosely on a real life story where a screenwriter, Hans Janowitz, was at a carnival and spotted a man lurking, lurking in the shadows, stalking a young woman. After she was found murdered the very next day, the same man was at the funeral. That is when he decided to write the screenplay. At number 4, Nosferatu. Directed by F.W. Murnau and starring Max Schreck as the spine-tingling Count Orlock, when Murnau was neither raised to adapt Bram Stoker's classic gothic novel to film by his estate, the game-changer of the director said to hell with it, switched up a few characters, and gave the world the single most terrifying and realistic vampire film of all time. Hutter, an optimistic real estate solicitor and newlywed husband, is tasked with selling a house in his hometown to the mysterious and feared Count Orlock. Once Orlock finds out about Hutter's wife Ellen, he decides to leave Harker in his ghostly castle and heads off to his new home, but not without traveling on a ship and slaying all those aboard and bringing a deadly plague to his new hometown, killing countless others in the process. Personal fact, I first saw Nosferatu on a DVD for $5 when I was 10, and despite the grainy quality and lackluster organ music, I immediately fell in love with it but when I saw a restored version many years later, with color tints and orchestral music, I was shocked at how such an amazing movie could become even greater, which is where my fascination with public domain and film preservation grew. At number 3, The Phantom of the Opera. Yep, who would have thought that the film containing one of the most iconic characters in horror and overall film history, which also went on to be made into one of the single most popular Broadway musicals of all time, is in the public domain, and is sold dirt cheap in box sets or can be watched absolutely for free here on YouTube. Based on the Gus on the Rue novel, filmed on Soundstage 28, which is supposedly haunted by Lon Chaney, talk about life imitating art. For a film with four different directors, including The Phantom himself, this film did have a bit of a troubled production, but that doesn't seem to get in the way of the elaborate set designs, costumes, and stunning cinematography. As for the makeup, we only have Lon Chaney to thank for that. That being said, the film was even selected by the library for preservation on account of being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant, which means it being in the public domain all the more strange. At number 2, Janu, The Tale of a Vampire. From the director that brought you The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, Robert Wine returns in the director's chair for this purely bizarre but aesthetically breathtaking German expressionist film about a coveted slave girl who was sold off to a miserly old man after being captured from her home. Once the old man's nephew comes to visit, Janine seduces the young man and, and encourages him to help her escape from her captors as well as to assist her in her nefarious desires. I first saw the 43 minute cut as a bonus feature on the Kino DVD release of The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and I don't know why but the film emotionally overwhelmed me in a way no other film has. Also. The 43 minute cut was pretty much the only version anybody could see as the only surviving print of the full hour and 28 minute cut was available in an art museum in Munich, Germany. Luckily, I recently came across the full cut here on YouTube. Unfortunately, there is no sound, so I recommend you either play the soundtrack from the 43 minute cut on a loop, which is also available here on YouTube, or you can listen to some Gabor Jabo which also works. At number 1, Dementia 13. Produced by Roger Corman and directed by a young pre-Godfather Francis Ford Coppola, 
While he was a crew member for Corman, Dimension 13 has everything I love about public domain films. It's cheap, it's grimy, it's grisly, and it's damn terrifying. As a matter of fact, this, alongside the aforementioned House on Haunted Hill, was, an, was one of the first two films that ever truly terrified me, and it was one of the first times I ever saw a guy get decapitated on screen. The film opens up with a not so happily married couple rowing on a boat in the middle of the night. Arguing about the wife's lack of inheritance and the rich husband's mother's will, he suddenly dies of a heart attack and, like every loving wife does, she dumps his carcass in the cold water and cue the creepy music while the body decomposes. After this, the wife tries to manipulate getting her name and her mother-in-law's will, but swiftly discovers there's an axe murderer lurking around the mansion. You should also check out the trailer. We need to make more movie trailers like they did back then.